Good afternoon, everybody. This is another live update. As the 12Z models are starting to flood in, happy Easter, everybody. And uh, I do think that the chances are increasing for supercell initiation near the triple point here in Kansas on Tuesday evening, maybe near just before sunset. Here you can see the front surging south. You've got a Colorado low that develops with a 989 low, kind of a banana-shaped low here. It's going to pivot down to the southeast, and this is going to become the effective triple point here in western Kansas, and this is a forecast for 0Z, the three-kilometer NAM. And in terms of dew points, pretty borderline dew points. You've got a, a plume, though, of low 60s dew points, near 60s streaming up uh, through Kansas at 0Z. Uh, mixing has ceased uh, down in this uh, warm sector. This moisture axis expands as we get near 0Z. Then you can see the cold front surging to the south on the west side of that uh, triple point. Dry line off to the south. Dew points drop into the teens and 20s across the Texas panhandle. Strong dry lines are going to be the theme this year with La Nina conditions, but definitely a nice plume, an axis of instability there. And uh, the three kilometer NAM has uh, an excess of 2,000 surface base cape. And that nose, that axis extending into southwestern Kansas. Here's that front coming south. You can see these little holes in the cape, possibly indicating where there's a threat of a surface based supercell initiation right in the nose of that axis, right along the front, right uh, near the triple point as well in western Kansas. And then as we go to the overnight hours, there's a chance that there could be additional development into south central Kansas as well on Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday, that threat shifts to the east across southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas. Still, though, this system overall is dealing with relatively limited moisture compared to the previous two systems that had high risks associated with them. So a little bit lower uh, dew points as the moisture needs to recover. Just yesterday, some OBS in the western Gulf of Mexico were in the low 60s for dew points. But pretty strong 0 to 1 kilometer helicity also within this moisture plume into southwestern Kansas. So if a storm does initiate and it can move east into this low-level jet axis, and there is quite a bit of uh, wind shear there. There you can see the hodograph looking quite favorable, but a big capping inversion. That's going to be difficult to overcome to develop surface based storms. You'll probably get elevated storms to the north of that triple point in the central and northern Kansas. That'll take advantage of all this elevated instability. Big ele monster elevated mixed layers, as you often get with these La Ninas. And quite a bit of curvature, directional shear in the low levels, as would be expected beneath a capping inversion of that magnitude. And you can see the stable layer at the low levels with this slightly increasing. Theta E with height, and then you get that those steep lapse rates aloft, showing the elevated instability above about 800 millibars across southwestern Kansas with this system of big looping hodographs with that strongly decoupled boundary layer, as would be expected. And uh, the three kilometer NAM does initiate some storms across central Kansas. Uh, this is at 0Z and even extending down toward the Dodge City area and some post-frontal activity across southwestern Kansas. But this is kind of right in the nose of that instability axis, and we're not within the range of the HRRR, the convective allowing models, of course, but that's right on the nose of that near 60 dew point. Maybe this could be kind of like that Plains, Kansas event from about five years ago where you had the wedge that evolved here across southwestern Kansas. Definitely a banana-shaped surface low, but really that low is going to shift from Colorado and propagate down to southwestern Kansas to this triple point. You can see northerlies on the cold front side, southeasterlies within that moisture axis, southwesterlies behind the dry line into the Texas panhandle as dew points drop into the teens. Maybe some wildfire danger behind this system across the southern high plains. Really low relative humidity and strong winds out there. But a nice moisture axis surging north through the Great Plains, and this is kind of a sign of things to come for uh, this tornado season ahead. I do think we're going to have these strong elevated mixed layers, sharp dry lines, severe weather in the southern plains, and then shifting to the mid-south as we go through the period. And then on Wednesday, this is the target area, southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas. 
And I do think that there is a chance of a, a decent t- tornado event on this day. I don't think it's going to be an outbreak or a moderate or high risk like we've had recently. Maybe an enhanced risk on this day. But pretty decent shear profiles and veered mid and upper level winds to kind of move those storms off of any initiating boundaries and also enhance that storm relative shear with those hodographs. I included that as the NAM, kind of showing that figure eight shaped 850 low. I think we're going to see something a little bit closer to the GFS, uh, more of a consolidated 850 low that's going to come in a bit further south. The NAM seems to be on board with that. Uh, The 12Z NAM has uh, trended more towards the GFS, so that consolidated 850 low there and a low-level jet axis through eastern Arkansas into southeastern Missouri. See what the new NAM shows for the upper levels. It's a very consolidated closed low at 500. Further south, even to in the west central Missouri, there by 0Z zero zero on Thursday. Quite a bit of upper support with this jet streak along the southern periphery and southeastern periphery of this closed upper low. Almost a neutral tilt, maybe a slight negative wobble to that. I bet we're going to see more closed 850 low too. And that's as expected. The NAM is trending more toward the GFS solution with this uh, closed 850 low. And a little bit further north with the 850 axis by 0Z. So could easily see an Illinois tornado on this day. Maybe southwestern Illinois into southeastern Missouri after chasing in Kansas. I've just got to decide whether I'm going to do another rental dominator or actually drive out with the dominator four all the way west. I'll chase this off to the east as this low level jet axis shifts eastward. Decent hodographs, but the thermodynamics don't look quite as favorable as I thought they would already in the NAM. But I think as we get closer to this event, as we've seen previously, I think we should see this uh, in the instability, the thermodynamics really fall into place, and we'll see some stronger surface-based Cape values out here in the southeastern Missouri. Pretty good uh, wind shear, though, out here. The kinematics are quite favorable within the core of that low-level jet into southeastern Missouri. Could see uh, even St. Louis uh, could have a tornado threat from this event in the warm sector. Big looping hodographs there. Thermodynamics still need to fall in line. You have a lot of these saturated profiles and just kind of some general low 60s dew points. But I think there's going to be a stronger elevated mix layer that's going to move in here and should carve out a nice instability axis for this event into southeastern and uh, eastern Missouri. It does show morning thunderstorms there, really limiting destabilization. But even back toward Little Rock, you have hodographs that are sufficient for a tornado threat. There's that stout elevated mix layer there, generating a bit more instability further south, central and southern Arkansas, then southeastern Missouri. But I think that there'll probably be a big, a thicker instability axis there on Wednesday as well. And there's the small instability axis on Thursday with the NAM. Pretty big capping aversion, but it is possible the models are trending toward the presence of surface-based storms at the nose of that instability axis, those low 60s dew points punching northward and uh, kind of nearer just to the northeast of that triple point up into even northern Kansas, maybe up near Hayes. I do think there's a chance of surface-based initiation more to the east-northeast of that surface low where that cold pool is more of a north-south oriented direction. Still some decent hodographs up there. Here you can see less of a capping inversion further north, closer to I-70 up into Kansas, 70 over 59. Pretty good low-level cape there as well. Look at that strong directional shear at the low levels, also in that little notch up into western Kansas along I-70. So that's definitely an area to watch as well. There's the hodograph, definitely some storm relative helicity there, and I could see that marginally supportive of a tornado threat, especially given those... Critical angle is pretty close to 90 degrees. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are the events to watch. I think Wednesday looks like the more significant day. 
Tuesday, maybe an isolated supercell or two into central Kansas at the nose of the instability axis. And then I think the NAM and the short range models are going to fall in line here, southeastern Missouri into northeastern Arkansas a bit more. So happy Easter, everybody. Just wanted to give you a quick live update as the 12Z models are coming in. And I'm beginning to hone my storm chasing plan for next week. With Masters weekend Thursday through the weekend, and there is a severe weather threat on Thursday, potentially including the Masters there. But uh, I don't think it's going to be a substantial severe weather threat. Maybe some hailers out there. Looks like a cold blob of air aloft. Early season hail producers. But definitely something to keep an eye on as well down there in the southeast. So thank you, everybody. Have a good Easter. Hope you enjoy my weather reports. And I'll have more to come as uh, we approach next week with an active storm chasing week ahead. Even though the Gulf of Mexico has been a little worked over, I still think we're going to get those low to mid 60s dew points for Wednesday. Sufficient to generate that tornado threat, but not the uh, moderate to high risks that we had with the last two systems, but still potential for significant severe weather and very chaseable systems on probably even Tuesday evening, Wednesday, and uh, Thursday on the way back.